everybody, it's JP from BigSexyBeast.com and the boys and I are loaded up and getting ready to take off on an epic summer road trip. We've got Scott back here in the back seat if you can see him. And uh, we've added uh, one thing here to the gear loadout, uh, kind of last minute really, but I think it's going to work out fine, is the uh, Mobi. off-road trailer um, so we'll have some fun with that and uh, we've had it out in a few videos before uh, but I think this one is gonna be a, a pretty uh, a pretty good epic adventure to put it through its paces and so come along for the ride um, it's gonna be uh, quite the uh, quite the journey we are headed uh, up towards st. Louis tonight um, as we make our way west so uh, anyway, look forward to, uh, to bringing you along with us and showing you, uh, showing you our adventure. Kayakers and boaters down on the river there, if you can see them, maybe kind of hard uh, from the GoPro. Uh, this is the Okoye River Gorge. You've seen it in several of my other videos, uh, but it's just a really pretty section here on the Georgia Tennessee border. We're squarely in Tennessee, but it's right at the border. Twisty, windy, nice and slow through here, um, but uh, world class whitewater rafting for sure. A lot of, a lot of boaters and rafters out today. I think everybody's enjoying the outdoors and ready to be back outside. So the Tundra has never set any world records for gas mileage, but one thing, if you can see that there, that is surprising me, is I normally get about 14 miles to the gallon, and I'm towing the teardrop trailer now. I'm getting 12. Uh, so it's having an impact, but not that much of an impact, which is kind of surprising, um, kind of a good surprise. All right, we're rolling her along through the, uh, the middle of Tennessee here, and uh, the boys are uh, getting quite a bit of screen time here. So where do we get to the woods? There's no Wi-Fi. Don't need Wi-Fi. Wi no, there's not gonna be any Wi-Fi. This is the Hattie B's at uh, Melrose. I haven't been to this location. Uh, James is going to go in and get the sandwiches, and we're going to walk Scout and uh, and let him do his thing while we get our sandwiches and then get back on the road. But, uh, I don't think that's just a product of social distancing. Hattie B's just so popular. There's always a line here. Still with us. There it is. Here it is. The Hattie B hot chicken sandwich. This one's just hot instead of damn hot. It's a little different. Uh, Scott's wanting to get in. You don't want that one, Scott. Trust me. He's uh, wanting to get in on the experience. It uh, it's a little different uh, with coronavirus and quarantine. Getting Hattie B's and not being able to go in, but uh, I think it's going to be good no matter what. We'll see what the boys think in a little bit. All right, here we go. First bite, if I can do it without getting it all over me. It's hot. <laughs> Spicy. Have you tried yours yet? No. Not yet. Have you tried your chickens yet, John? No. There's a whole huge piece, like, hanging off. I'm going to give it a scat. Tear it into little pieces for him. Tear it into little pieces. Okay. That's the chicken, James. Really good. Really good. What do you think, John? 
this? Yeah. I didn't eat it yet. Oh, go for it. It's too hot. Temperature wise? Yeah. What's the verdict on the chicken, Johnny? What? What's the verdict on the chicken? Is it good? Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> good stuff? Well, I'm stopped to get gas here. I thought I'd show you. I switched the tires on the Moby from 35s uh, down to 31s. Uh, it's the metric size, but it's effectively a 31 on all three. Uh, it matches up the height of the Tundra a little bit better. The FJ, of course, has got 35s and it's taller, uh, but it makes it set level with the Tundra. And it pulls pretty good. I can't really tell that it pulls a lot better uh, with the 31s than it did the 35s, but uh, it pulls good with the Tundra. So we'll see how that does off-road. Should be fine because there is just tons of clearance under this trailer. So 35s really didn't matter. And it made the, uh, I'll show you later tonight, the countertop height much more workable by dropping it down to the 31s. So that part I'm pretty excited about. All right, I made a wrong turn. Instead of going straight through the stop light, I turned. So the boys get a, uh, a drive through the heart of Music City here in Nashville. I think right now Nashville's the fastest growing city the in the United States. Take the first exit to Lafayette Street. So we'll get a partial scenic view of, uh, of downtown Nashville here while we get back on the interstate. So this uh, is probably going to be home for the night. Uh, I've camped at this is Ferncliff State Park here in Illinois, just across the Kentucky border. Um, I've camped here a couple times before. Uh, last time I was here, I camped in the uh, the horse camp area, actually in the FJ. And then I was here in the old motorhome uh, two years ago. And Scout's taken off here. Um, and uh, I had the whole place to myself both times. It's pretty full this time. We're over in uh, a group camp area. There's no group camping right now because of coronavirus. And obviously we're not a group. There's no signs that say that you can't be here. We went to the park host and uh, tried to check in and they're nowhere to be found. So hopefully we're not gonna have any trouble here tonight. It's actually a pretty nice spot. I'd love to be able to pull out here on this grass. Um, and park, but I don't know that that's allowed. So we're just gonna park right there in that little turnaround area. And uh, I've given the boys a 15 minute warning. They gotta get off the devices and then we're gonna find something to do. Hopefully cook some dinner and nobody bothers us here tonight. Tells us we have to move. Um, after driving about eight and a half hours, I'm not in the mood to move. It's a trouble when you're um, heading west, eastern United States, it's not as much national forest and BLM land. And so I find that state parks actually um, can be pretty good if you can't find a place in I overlander. And um, so that's what we're doing. There's a couple that I kind of hit on my route out west most of the time that uh, are, are pretty pretty good spots to kind of repeat, repeatedly hit. Um, but with the pandemic and everything, it's just kind of hard to, uh, to make sense out of it all and to navigate. So we'll take it as we go, see what we find. Hopefully, uh, uh, we don't get disturbed.
Hey, Jamesy, I'm filming the setup over here. You want to come over here? So I'm filming the setup. What are you calling the setup? The cooking setup? Yeah, just uh, for the viewers, showing them kind of how we set the teardrop up and get everything ready for camp. All right. So the teardrop sets up pretty quick. Uh, so the stove uh, pulls out there of the sink, sink right above, and then it's got a two burner 22 inch partner steel stove that uh, you probably saw me attaching it to the house plumbing on the propane bottle. And so your propane bottle, you can see there, I'm not used to not using the wide angle lens on the GoPro. Propane bottle goes up into the house plumbing here. You've got an on off valve for uh, the stove and also the um, Propex heater inside and the uh, this box right here um, is the uh, on-demand hot water heater and so you've got shutoff valves for each of those and then you just pull um, the cable around there uh, to run the, uh, the partner steel stove and uh, I tell you I'm already liking the uh, the 30, uh, 31 inch tires versus the 35s. Lower that countertop like two inches, which makes this surface um, uh, a lot more workable um, for prepping and cooking. Um, let me uh, switch the camera up and show you inside here. Do something I've never done here, which is play with two cameras at once and uh, and then try to edit them down. You guys can tell me how, uh, how you like it when you see the finished product. There's a tripod and James over there. So this is the Partner Steel Stove. Uh, it's a 22 inch. Um, I think I did a walk around video on the teardrop, but you got your silverware and that kind of stuff in there. And it just slides out of the, uh, the sink, which is here. It's got about 40 gallons of onboard water. And then the fridge uh, slides out on rails there. So you've got fridge freezer or fridge fridge I've been fridge fridge right now and I'm not running them that cold six degrees Celsius because uh, it's a little bit easier on the battery um, kind of show you up in here so I just keep uh, grocery bags in here that I can use for a quick uh, a quick garbage bag so in here I did a built-in so we've got all of our dishes and stuff like that it stays pretty neat and organized and then for this trip I've done it a little bit differently um, those latches sometimes can be kind of hard to open. Um, I got these baskets, and up here I've got all sorts of dry goods and food. I got a little thermal crock pot up there, and our rolled oats and some seeds for breakfast. A couple years ago, I built this shelf here so that I could put some frying pans underneath and just kind of keep them uh, stable and stationary and out of the way. And then I got a snack goodie box here for the boys, uh, full of all sorts of different snacks, goldfish, that kind of stuff, and. When you roll up to camp, you can take it, set it off the countertop over to the side on the on the fold-out table, and then you got all this counter space here to uh, to work with. And then in here, more dry goods, pizza crusts, some coffee, some of that kind of stuff in there. Um, in here, really need to do some work on these latches. They're a little hard sometimes. More dry goods, tortillas, coffee, uh, that kind of stuff. Oh, by the way, there's the subwoofer and sound system stuff in there. We got them up there too. Uh, so it's a pretty good setup. I really actually like the teardrop. Wasn't planning on bringing it on this trip uh, simply because I wanted the maneuverability of just having the Tundra. It's got a slide out pantry here as well, um, as you can see. Hopefully with doing two cameras here, you'll be able to get a perspective of kind of where I'm at and where I'm moving around. Um, but yeah, originally was just gonna take the uh, the Tundra, as you guys saw me in that loadout video, getting everything ready, there's Mr. Scout, um, because it's a lot more maneuverable, and, uh, uh, but since the boys decided to come with me for the first uh, first several weeks of the trip here, um, the Moby's just a lot nicer to be able to get everybody, uh, well, the Tundra's just not big enough to get everybody uh, comfortably slept. Uh, seated and slept in it so um that's uh that's the setup we'll play with it uh through the course of this trip and see um you know how we end up changing it but that's where we're at right now well i put the tire table up on the trailer this time instead of on the truck 
and I actually think that's going to be kind of a neat setup. Um, so, kind of happy with that. One point for Scout. Oh, it's gonna be all gross, isn't it? <laughs> Not too bad.
What's that? I need to charge my phone. Is there something I can put in? Yeah, in the back of the truck. Here, let me show you. We're watching a little uh, Japanese anime before bed. If you can tell what's going on there. Go ahead and hop up in there. Hey, hand me my pillow with the arrows on it. Thanks. All right, get in your spot, and then I'll have him come load. And you have to tell him to get in his spot, or he'll try to hog the bed. Yeah, don't stay up too late. We got we'll run early in the morning and then get on the road. Scott. Scotty. Come on, deaf man. Alright. Hold up. Ready? Up. And up. Go get it. Up. Ready? Go. Oh, you bet over here. Ready? Good boy. Lay down. All right, Jamesy, I'm going to leave this ramp right here because in the morning he's going to immediately want to jump down and you need something. So if you get up in the night, just remember there's a ramp right here and you can't step on it. All right, let me get his water bottle and put it right there for him. There's his water bowl. I put it right there so it's pushing up against the door and can't slide down. All right, I'll shut your door if you want to lock it. You got everything you need? Yep. Got your water? Got my water, my phone, yep, everything. All right, we'll see you guys in the morning. See you in the morning. Yell if you need me. There you go. Easy peasy. All right, you got your phone lighted if you need it, right? Actually, hand me my headlamp. Let me. In the overhead shelf is my headlamp. All right, good night, Scouty. He may growl a couple times in the night if he smells anything. He typically does. All right, night. Alright, 
uh, we're wrapping up our first night here. It's after 10 Eastern, so like 9, 10 p.m. here. Uh, great day. Um, nice and quiet. Johnny's been asleep since we got here. He's out like a light, so uh, he's probably going to wake up in the middle of that starving to death. Anyway, um, thanks for uh, for riding along with us. It'll get more interesting as we get uh, further out west. All this may be interesting just to kind of see how we do camp and stuff like that. But um, once we get out west into National Forest and BLM land, then we'll be much more off grid uh, than we are here. But we got a nice quiet spot all to ourselves. Can't complain about that. All right, thanks for tuning in.